I'm Dan Cates, Superintendent of Township High School District 211. What's going on everyone? I'm super excited to kick off our next interview of the GBA Real World Series where I will be interviewing some of the top people in their career field who on a daily basis live through the GBA mindset. Our interview today is with one of the most qualified leaders in the education field and is someone who I think exemplifies a perfect GBA mindset. From working in Illinois schools for over 34 years as a psychologist and administrator, the Director of Special Education in District 211 from 2001 to 2008, and the former elected superintendent in 2014 of the largest Illinois school district, who would go on to be awarded the 2018 Superintendent of Distinction of the Illinois Association of School Administration. I'm excited to welcome Dr. Dan Cates. Dr. Cates, thanks for joining me today. Eric, thanks a lot for having me. I'm uh, glad to be here today. It is uh, a pleasure to see you again, and uh, you certainly have been one of our finest. Uh, I'm most recently retired as superintendent of Township High School District 211, as in the suburbs of Palatine, Schaumburg and Hoffman Estates uh, outside of Chicago. I did my undergraduate degree at the University of Notre Dame and then had a chance to go to graduate school at Indiana University where I got my uh, doctorate. And, uh, and it was after that that I uh, began working at uh, District 211. Wow, very cool, thank you. Um, in starting this brand, I've talked a lot about how important the three words grind, believe, and achieve are in terms of your overall life mindset. I've watched you since 2010 when I was in high school routinely challenge students, parents, teachers, and the administration to develop the best educational system in the state of Illinois. And you know, this required everyone to believe in your leadership and then work hard or grind to achieve your goals. In your position as superintendent of Illinois Public Schools, how do you have to apply that GBA mindset on a daily basis? Well, I do think the three factors that you've uh, tapped into there are absolutely central. So in terms of, uh, you know, the grind, uh, I like to um, be the first one to get to the office and I like to be the last one to leave. Uh, I certainly was probably not the most talented person in any arena that I was in, but I always had this uh, mentality that, um, while I might not have been the most naturally gifted person, I certainly would be the person who was going to work the hardest, and uh, I wasn't going to leave anything, you know, un unplayed. So the approach has been extremely helpful uh, in all the challenges uh, throughout my my career. Certainly, as superintendent, the the challenges can come from any direction, uh, at any time, and as aspects of uh, the organization are so many. Mm -hmm. uh, that you really have to have really good people around you. But um, I had a, uh, a little habit that I did every morning, and I don't know that I ever told anyone about this, but I would take a quiet time every morning uh, before I was gonna go and leave the house. And in that quiet time, I would um, you know, basically have a little reflection. In that reflection, I would say, give me the difficult one today. You know, give me the hard challenge today, right. because if I invited it, then, you know, I wasn't going to be surprised by it. <laughs> and um, it was always helpful for me to say, well, I invited this and I found that I lived, you know, with less uh, suffering, less fear, less anxiety. And um, I was better able to approach items just knowing that, um, quite frankly, I had asked for it. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was, uh, that was a very helpful mentality for me every day. And, and I love that because when I, when I hear you talk, I would say I'm surprised, but I'm not because you hold yourself to the highest standard. And that's something that this brand, that's something that I want people to understand through this GBA mindset. Um, in your field, you've had to hold yourself to the highest standard. How did you get teachers, students, and even parents to buy into your exceptionally high standards that were achieved during your administration? How, how are you able to do that? Sure. The um, truth is that there were times when I knew that I was not succeeding. 
<laughs> and okay. and uh, so I didn't ever want to presume that it was automatically happening. Uh, what I what I do believe is that if people know that we share the same commitment to the priorities that they share, that you know we we would be able to to move together. You know, for parents, that was knowing that their kids were our top priority. Mm -hmm. And um, same was true for coaches and, and teachers. And for those people who uh, did not immediately adapt to the vision that we had set or the course that we had set, I found that there were generally indications that their priorities might not have been the same that we had. Right. And so, um, you know, our, our uh, mantra was not to, not to chase the people that we weren't going to convince but to uh, rally all of the support and energy and um, really good momentum from all the excellent people that we had. Um, I do believe that life is, uh, you know, it is an inside job. And if people know that you care about them on the inside, and if they get to see your insides, those connections for leaders and the people who want to follow leaders they're they're indelible there's always a light that they can see and those were the uh you know the moments that um i'll, I'll remember you know for people throughout the organization uh some extremely caring people and uh people fully committed just as i was uh, right. to do the absolute best job that we could for the people in our care and i look at someone like you a a true leader in your you know, in the system and in the education field, I just, I can imagine that didn't happen overnight. And I, and I imagine that there were, like you said, many challenges that you had to stick with and grind every day to kind of, to get past that. There's no doubt that the um, uh, help of people around me, you know, when I'm, and everyone's human. And so the times when I would struggle, I did not uh, refrain from asking uh, people for help or asking to people to lend their ear. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that served me well. The uh, truth is that um, every one of us is, is really doing the best we can. And uh, when I would lose sight of that, <laughs> you know, when I think somebody wasn't given their best effort, I, I did owe it to them to, you know, to work with them and to help bring them along. And uh, at the same time, um, what I would find uh, nearly every time was that people had their own battles going on that I was unaware of, mm -hmm. just like I did. And so by reaching out, asking for help, uh, people were able to, you know, help bolster me to give me just a little bit more wind to make it around the bend and uh, to keep going. The other uh, little mantra that I had was that, um, you know, life is really waged to 36 minutes at a time. That's a little theory that I have that, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit longer than 30 minutes, a little bit longer than half an hour, but it's not quite 45. And so like that. no matter what the challenge is, um, you know, what I find is that uh, the task seems to have a different appearance, you know, after that window of time. And everyone can do that amount of time. I just need to buckle down and get to it and stay committed and focused and, you know, in, in not that long, um, we'll be in a different spot. I really like that. And, and moving off of that support system, the word that really came to my mind was accountability. I mean, and not just with you and the people that work for you, but you also making sure that you hold yourself accountable too, so that they can see, you know, you're putting in the work as well. And, you know, whether you're an athlete, a professional or student, you're at one point or another required to, you know, in lack of better terms for GBA, grind at your craft and believe in yourself before you're able to achieve your goals. What would some advice be that you can give to people to overcome any adversity that they're going through? Sure, that uh, combination uh, really is the, um, a powerful one. And uh, what I would say is that uh, there were moments when uh, it felt like my grind you know, was wearing me or others out. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was really when I needed to uh, circle back make sure that uh, people knew that I believed in them and uh, had the confidence that, that we were moving in the right direction. Uh, similarly, what I found was that when the grind was wearing heavily on me, it was when I 
faltered, you know, in my own belief about myself or the direction that we were going. And um, that can happen. Um, so my uh, experience has been that, you know, in order to get to the next level, just to get to the next threshold, and in most things that we do, there's always that next threshold, right? Of course. And um, the grind and the believe, um, they go together. Uh, now, I can't, I can't just grind, <laughs> and I can't just grind on people. Uh, they need to know I believe in them. And when we uh, combined those, that was when we uh, really, you know, got the, the catalysts going. That's when the whole momentum, the, the mojo started to go. Right. And uh, they happened in pieces. Uh, but I would say that your, you know, your, your combination there is one that uh, immediately uh, made sense to me and resonated with me when I, when I saw that. Well, I appreciate that. And I, I definitely agree with you. I think, you know, the steps go hand in hand and it's not something that you can just take out and apply. I think you need to, to do the entire process. Um, so I appreciate that. I, I do have one more question for you. And this is a, uh, an interesting one. I haven't asked any of my past interviewees before, but next week I will be re releasing a video. It's called What's Your Why? Um, as part of the GBA mindset, I think it's essential uh, like you talked about, to remind yourself of the driving force that keeps you going, the reason you wake up and grind every day, right? Just like you took that time before, you know, you went to go to work. So as someone who has created, you know, the best learning environment for education, educators and their students in the state of Illinois, has improved countless career pathways for students, you know, and has provided many other benefits to students in District 211, what was your why? And on a separate note, what's your why today? Sure. So the uh, question is exactly at the very heart of it. <laughs> so your, your, I look forward to, to you know, to seeing your, your, your video and, and the message that you send. Uh, in terms of my answer, uh, for a school person, students have to be at the center. And certainly there are uh, a whole, what we call a 360 degree perspective of, you know, uh, associated matters, uh, certainly finances or politics or uh, laws or operations. But in the end, if, uh, if I was struggling with a decision, if I was struggling with a position, if I was struggling with the next um, milestone that we were trying to reach, mm -hmm. if I kept students at the center, which is why your, your message of the why is so critical. If I kept the why, the brightest of all things, then I found that the pathway was much more clear. It was only when the secondary or, you know, third level items that entered that clouded my mind or clouded a person's propensity to want to try to please people. But keeping first things first made it so much easier. Um, so, you know, it was, it was students at the center. And what I would say then is that um, my own path, you know, if you were a betting person, you, you wouldn't bet that I would have ended up where I was. That was, that was not good odds, right? Mm -hmm. It was because people committed themselves to give me opportunities and to uh, believe in me that uh, I then, uh, very few people actually get the microphone. And what I call it is the microphone moment. And when you have the microphone, you need to speak up. And that was often my uh, charge to myself is, my goodness, you are put in this position, go do it and make it be of impact. You know, this is a, uh, a rare opportunity. So go ahead and take your swings because that uh, they're counting on you to do that. People need to get someplace and you're the person who can help them. Those were the, those were the whys. So, you know, my um, superintendency has ended. I, I did retire and uh, my why now is that I find that I, I have more time, uh, you know, to care about people and to carry on this work uh, in, in another direction. Um, but in terms of the operations of overseeing, you know, a large organization and thousands of employees and, you know, over 10,000 students, uh, you know, that, that's not my uh, day anymore, but I continue to contribute and uh, 
offer you know what I have to people on a on a, a bit more intimate level and and a personal contribution to their to their growth. So I, I love that, and I hope you don't mind me stealing this phrase, but you said microphone moment, and I just think you know in the term of GBA ethos, the culture of grinding, believing, and achieving, it really is about that. And one of the reasons why I was really excited to interview you was because I think a lot of my audience has seen just athletes, professional athletes. And you're a professional in the education field at the highest level, and not everyone wants to be a professional athlete. There are people aspiring to be, like I said, doctors, teachers, CEOs of businesses, right? And for you, that microphone moment resonates with me. And I think it would resonate with a lot of other people because there is sometimes just a moment where you have to take control and, and to speak into that microphone, what you want to accomplish. That's it. Uh, you gotta, you gotta live your truth, right? And uh, when those moments arise, uh, those are the, those are the moments that we know we're out on the field. We are not in the locker room, and it's no longer a theory. Uh, this is, this is the moment. And uh, again, I, I just so greatly resonated with your, uh, you know, grind, believe, achieve. It is exactly right down the center of the, uh, uh, the daily charge for people who want to make a difference in whatever field that is. Well, I appreciate that. And Dr. Cates, once again, thank you so much for taking the time um, out of your busy schedule to have this interview. I know a lot of people will get uh, many things out of this. For me, I've, I've gotten a lot out of it as well. But once again, just thank you for taking the time to do this. You know, Eric, we have uh, a few uh, young people who have been uh, the standouts and uh, I get around and I commonly go to a lot of events. I talk to a lot of teachers, uh, a lot of kids and a lot of coaches. And uh, what I will tell you is that uh, you're on a very, very short list of people who, who shine brightly uh, for all of the right reasons. And uh, for that, I, I thank you uh, for being such a good example and the opportunity today. I have nothing uh, but assurance that your future is uh, so bright and you're going to help, uh, help make it so for many others. So thank you for that. Thank you very much. It's very kind. And I look forward to continue watching, uh, reading your blog. I'm very excited to stay up to date on that as well. So keep that oh, up. Terrific. Once again, I hope everyone is healthy and, and thank you for taking the time to do this interview. Thanks. And all, all the best to yours, huh? Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. Dr. Gates.